My dear brothers and sisters, I wish to welcome you to the fifth Sunday of Easter. Today we continue to read the final discourse of our Lord Jesus Christ during the Last Supper. The whole of the teachings and the sayings of Jesus today revolve around relationship. Jesus gives a like a picture of the relationship between the tree and its branches. And that applies between him and us, his followers, his disciples. First, Jesus says, I am the true vine, the true vine. Now, why did Jesus not say, I am the true mango? <laughs> I am the true uh, cashew, or uh, I am the true that and that and that. Why did he choose the vine? Of course, the vine was popular at that time, but remember that it is through the vine we get the wine, and the wine for the Jewish people is a symbol of joy. It's a symbol of joy. Imagine living your life without joy. Imagine living your life without happiness. Just imagine that. It will be a miserable life. It will be a painful life, a sorrowful life, a life filled with sadness. So I am the true vine, which means that there is a possibility there are other vine, other trees, but I am the true one, which means that I am the absolute one. I am the perfect one. I am the only person that you can trust. And remember, Jesus uses that divine name I am. The same divine name that God used for Moses when Moses asked him, what is your name? So that when I go back, I'll be able to tell my people, the one who has been talking to me. And remember that when God said to Moses, I am, it's not a proper name per se of God. Rather, it is a descriptive name. Descriptive in the sense that it reminds us that God is unchangeable, immutable, eternal, you know, trustworthy. It simply means that God was telling Moses, I will be for you, whoever and whatever you want me to be for you at any time. When you are sick, I will be your healer. When you are poor, I will be your provider. When you are sorrowful, I will be your joy and happiness. When you are alone, I will be your companion. When you are in danger, I will be your protector. That's what it means. So when Jesus says, I am the true vine, it means that I will be your joy, you know, anytime, anywhere. Now, Jesus goes on to remind us of the function of his father. He says that I am the true vine. My father is the grower. And not just the grower, but my father is also the one responsible for cutting off the branches that remain unfruitful. That is, branches that do not bear fruit. It is the work of my father. It is the discretion, prerogative of my father to cut them off. And when they are cut off, of course, if the branch is cut off from the tree, it withers. It is automatic. Thirdly, Jesus reminds us that his father is also the one who prunes. Prunes means just like circumcision, just like cutting off. And what is the aim of this pruning? The aim of the pruning is to make us to be more fruitful. Because Jesus says that even the branches that bear fruit, my father still prunes them. Why? Because God knows that you can be a better person that you, than you are now. God looks, you know, at our potentials, not on our failures. So God prunes us through different ways, through sickness, through misfortunes, through struggles, through challenges. Ultimately, through his word, he prunes us because he wants us to be fruitful. It may be painful. This pruning may be painful, but it is basically to re-establish us on a higher pedestal. And the highest pedestal, friends in Christ, is to stand and remain in relationship with God. Because God prunes us to enter into relationship with Him. Because sometimes, if we are not pruned, I know people who wouldn't have come to the church if not because of their 
misfortunes. I'm not saying that God sends us misfortunes, but God can allow that to come to us in order to draw us closer to himself. Some people wouldn't have returned to the church if not because they had near-death experience. I like to invite us to count how many times Jesus used that word to remain, to remain. You know, he used that word eight times, eight, eight times, which means that every day, the seven days of the week, we have to remain. We have to remain. And to remain means to be loyal. To remain means to surrender ourselves. To remain means to be obedient. To remain means to be faithful. To remain means to, you know, to stay in relationship with Him. And how do we remain? By keeping the commandments. The second reading tells us what to do. To believe in Christ and to love one another. These are the ways we remain. Through our charity works. Through our faith. There are so many ways we remain. But the choice to remain, you know, is on you and me. God does not force anyone. But he tells us there are consequences and implications. If we choose to remain, there are blessings. If we choose to cut off from him, there are consequences and implications. Now, if we choose, if we make the choice to remain with the Lord, we will be alive, we will be fruitful, we will become his disciples, we will become the friends of Christ. Whatever we pray in the name of Christ, the Father will listen to us, the Father will grant our heart desires. Why? Because we remain in him. And I want to tell you that we can do so many things, beautiful things, if we remain in Christ. But if we cut off from Christ, we are just good for nothing. Because what gives life meaning is actually to remain in relationship with God, with Christ. A meaningful life is a life lived in relationship with Christ. A meaningless life is a life lived outside Christ, not having a relationship with Christ. And it can be a miserable, painful, sorrowful, sad life. Remember that every human being is composite. Remember that... The things we eat can never give us happiness. The source of happiness is having a relationship with God. It is not happiness does not come from the things we drink and the things we eat. No, those things can give us pleasure, but they cannot give us happiness because they only attend to our flesh, our body. But happiness is of the soul and the food we eat cannot penetrate our soul. It can only go inside our body and go out through the toilet, through the latrine. But our soul is animated through our relationship with Christ. So if we want to bear fruit, the fruit we bear is the fruit of love, as we see in the second reading. But it's not just, you know, uh, St. John, St. John makes, uh, makes it very emphatic that we should love in action, not in words. Of course, we can show love by speaking beautiful words, but what John is talking about here is empty words. For us to love, really, we have to put it into practice. Love is not just a word, but love is an action. And we see a typical, practical action in the first reading. Look at our first reading. When Saul got converted and... um, was trying to mix up with the the brothers and the sisters, the early Christians, they were very, you know, afraid of him. They were discriminating against him. You know, they heard about how he was persecuting the church, so they were afraid. Ordinarily, I would be afraid also. But Barnabas was the one who showed practical love. Because when every other person was running away from Paul, Barnabas took Paul and brought Paul to the apostles and to the community and introduced Paul to the community and reminded everyone that he is no longer Saul, he is Paul now. He has experienced change, he has experienced metanoia, he has experienced repentance, he has experienced conversion. He's no longer the old Saul, it is now the new Paul. This is what we call 
practical love, that when every other person abandons you, you see someone coming to take you by the hand to accept you. So we see acceptance as a practical love. We see recommendation from Barnabas as a practical love. We see appreciation from Barnabas as practical love. There are so many ways we can show practical love, but I just want to mention these three as we see from the first reading. You know, acceptance, that is accommodating other people who may be unique, who may be different from us. The second one is recommendation. Let us stop condemning people. Let us begin to recommend them. And the third one is appreciation. Appreciate people the way they are. Nobody created himself or herself. It is only God who has created us. And it suffices to say that as Christians, we should show practical love by appreciating other people in their own uniqueness. And finally, remember that this gospel passage reminds us that we have a place, we have a position. Don't take the position of Christ. Take your own position. That is called humility also. You know, we are the branches. We are not the vine, but we are the branches. As soon as we take our position as branches, uh -huh, that is the moment we begin to bear fruit. But if we engage ourselves in usurpation, that is, taking a position that is not ours, Ah, we are going to fail. We begin to become fruitful. We begin to blossom the moment we take our own position. And our own position is that we are the branches. We have to allow God to be God. And we have to allow ourselves to be human. I will tell God about you.